Welcome to the Russia's Grizzly Coast Brown Bear Exhibit. My name is Jessica. I work in the Education Department at the Minnesota Zoo. And we're going to take a little tour of the exhibit today while the brown bears are off exhibit while work is being done in their display. I'm going to point out a few things to you that make this exhibit an award-winning one, such as the safety features for zookeepers, the sturdiness of the exhibit for the bears, and some of the aesthetic qualities that make it look really great and like something you might even see in the Russian Far East. Right now we're standing in what's known as the dig pit. Now, when this exhibit was designed, there are uh, several areas that were intentionally made to uh, give enrichment activities to the bears or encourage them to spend time near the windows or other places where guests might see them. If you've been visiting the Minnesota Zoo, you know that this is a really good place to see the bears on a lot of days. The sand is kind of cool on a hot day. There's some shade here. It's a nice place for the bears to take a little snooze. But bears also like to dig. So the sand is great for digging, but the truth is the bears dig up everything in this exhibit that they can get their hands on. And so most of what you see for vegetation in this front part of the exhibit is just grass and weeds. That's really all that can survive up here with all the bears digging activity. Later on, when we go towards the back of the exhibit, you'll see some wonderful planting that our horticulture team takes care of. And all of those plantings are actually behind the electric fence, which is why they look so good. One of the neat features of all this exhibit rock work is that it's undercut and slopes inward in such a way to keep the bears from climbing out, but still looks like something you might find in Kamchatka Peninsula or the Russian Far East. The exhibit is currently being worked on. The pool and stream feature are drained. Ordinarily, there'd be about 20,000 gallons of water flowing from the stream on down into the pool where the bears take a swim. There's also a geyser feature that occasionally erupts in water and the bears are known to stick their faces in that. The stream below is stocked with trout and keepers uh, initially weren't sure if the bears would go fishing for these trout because as orphans they didn't have uh, mothers to teach them how to fish. But after the bears got a little bigger and spent some time looking at the fish, they were finally able to get some techniques to catch the fish. One of which involves kind of herding them into the corners of the pool before they catch them. This well-worn path I'm standing on is kind of beaten down because this is the path that the bears take every morning when the exhibit opens and every night when they go back inside. So if you are visiting as a guest and looking through the glass window, you may occasionally see a bear up on this rock. Little known fact, when the bear stands on the rock, it is able to see all sorts of areas of the zoo, including the Environmental Education Center, the parking lot, and the Central Plaza. And what's more, the bears can smell a lot up here too. So that's actually extra special enrichment for the bears to be able to see what's going on around the zoo and those smells too. You can probably smell things as far away as the McDonald's and Egan. They've got very, very good sense of smell. So if you see a bear standing on the top of the rock and looking out into the distance, there's probably more that that bear is seeing that you could ever know. Yep, go. Cool. You've arrived in the bear den. This is the area that the bears spend most of their time in the winter, even though they do go off exhibit at night. Now there are heated rock features throughout the exhibit, five of them, but the one that's here in the bear den, shortly after opening, the zookeepers found out they didn't need to use. While the other ones are encouraging the bears to stay near the glass where guests can see them, this one was warm enough on its own with the body heat of the bears and actually started to compost the straw bedding that the zookeepers put there. So now it's just left as it is and the bears will spend most of November, December, January, and February in here. If you come and visit, you usually see a big furry rear end pressed up against the glass.